So today I want to talk to you about one of the most important parts of being a financial planner. This is a part that the financial services industry doesn't really care about. To many of them, the service for a client starts and ends with a financial product, a pension, an investment, talking about who is the best fund manager and how we can move money around. But the truth is, real financial planning has very little to do with this. I think everyone has stories of people who worked every day, all hours God sends, and then has a heart attack and dies on the golf course on the first day of retirement. And while life will always be unfair and unpredictable, regardless of good planning, I also believe that we all get swept up by life's treadmill. And it's rare for us to think in such a clear way about the big questions of whether our life is how we want it to be, or whether we're on track for our ideal future. As the truth is, it's not something we ever get asked. The danger here is that we let the life we want to lead with ourselves or our family go from one day to if only. Because I believe that every day the things that we get up for, we go to work to do and we bust our gut for is based upon the mistake that we have more time than we do. Let me show you. If you're 45, these are the amount of weeks you're expected to live based on ONS life expectancy stats. If you retire at 65, this is how many weeks we would expect you to have left living. Now, if we take the stats of ONS healthy life expectancy, how many years you expect to remain healthy, this is how many weeks you have left. So the influence for the concept behind this episode is Paul Armson's book called Enough, where he uses the phrase, life is not a rehearsal. And this is very true. There is no second time around. Real financial planning is based upon the simple premise that we lose focus on this fundamental truth. So let me explain how we can go into this and give it a little bit more context. So I want to talk to you about the concept of your bucket, as it's an important one to understand. So imagine this, this is your bucket, and inside it is your emergency savings, perhaps your investments, your bank account savings. The thing is, this is all relatively easy to get hold of. Some might take you a day to get hold of, some perhaps seven days, but the point is it's all liquid holdings. And you might perhaps have other assets, such as your home, but this doesn't sit in your bucket as you can't spend bricks and mortar. You can't take a few bricks out of your house to grab and get some food. For many, a house is much a liability as it is an asset, as you may have mortgage or maintenance costs to pay. Now, one day, yes, you might downsize, and that might mean selling that house. And because of that, more money may come into your bucket that can then be spent. Also, what may be outside of your bucket right now is your pension. If you're under 55 or 57 soon, you can't access your pension. But one day, that money will be able to be drawn and can potentially fall into your bucket. But for most of your working life, that is outside of your bucket because you can't get access to it. And you might also have a business, which again would sit outside of the bucket until the day you sell. Now, you do have money coming into your bucket through salary or dividends, maybe child benefit, all the rest. These are all temporary, as one day, hopefully you'll be able to retire. Maybe you'll sell your business. And you'll also have things like state pensions coming in or the pension income coming in at that point. So this looks pretty good, right? And hopefully your bucket should be filling up. Well, there's only one problem. We also have taps, and these taps are your expenditure. This is the cost of your lifestyle and doing the things that you like to do. Whether that is a new car you like to drive, holidays three times a year, because there's a cost to this. But it is important that you spend on those things because it's important you have a good life now because none of us know how long we actually have to do these things. And there is one more tap which gets turned on and this is for one-off expenditures. Maybe it's the yacht, it's your daughter's wedding. You know, it's the big things that you want to do, but only come up once every so often. And the final tap here is the one that gets turned on when you retire. And it may even be the case that for a period, this tap is actually higher than the original taps you had when you were working, because you might want to go around the world on a cruise. And of course, you should do that if you can afford it, because life isn't a rehearsal. Now, sadly, this tap will be turned off because one day you'll become too old to enjoy yourself to the same extent. Where perhaps you used to be able to go walking up mountains, you now struggle to walk upstairs. Instead of getting out of a boat or your new car, 
you struggle to get in and out of a wheelchair. At this stage, you can't do the things you want to do as you could in the earlier stages. Look, it happens to us all. And then finally, one day, that's the end of it. Time is up, it's a fact of life. So my job is to help you understand what is gonna to happen to your bucket. And really only one of two things is gonna happen. One is it'll either run out because there's not enough in the first place, which means that these taps will have to be turned down or off, which isn't great because it means you don't get the life you want. Or the other option, which is potentially as bad, your bucket runs so high that it overflows. Now you might be thinking, well, why is that bad? Well, because if you go to your grave with too much in your bucket, you probably will pay a shed load of tax on everything you've done through your life. And then potentially you might even be subject to inheritance tax, which is additional tax on money that you've already been taxed upon. But forget the money, most importantly, there is a chance you could be lying on your deathbed with all the money, but no time. And you're thinking to yourself, damn. You didn't do the things you wanted to do. You maybe didn't climb the mountain, or maybe you didn't go on the holidays you wanted to before your partner passed away. You worked late nights until 65, when actually the truth is you could have retired at 55 and done those things. And my job is to make sure that that doesn't happen to you, to help you live the life you want now, while you can, within reason, and make sure that we don't lose focus on what is important to you and the amount of time we have left to do this. This is real financial planning. It's the process of making sure your finances are set up in the right way to live the life you want in the best possible way. It takes into account the trade-offs of everyday life. And yes, sometimes we have to sacrifice and save, but we also need to set ourselves up so that we have the freedom sometimes to spend. It's about working with a professional on your side who understands on the balance of what you want and how to achieve it. So now that we know what needs to be done and the potential urgency of needing to do it, for those of you who are good enough to watch my content, I'm going to leave you with three questions to think about from George Kinder's famous questions. So the first is just on designing your life. Imagine you are financially secure. You've got enough money to take care of your needs now and in the future. It's not that money's no object, but you've got enough money. How would you live your life now? Would you change anything? Describe a life that is completely and richly yours. Okay, the second question is, you now have less time. Imagine you visit your doctor and they tell you you've only got five to 10 years left to live. You won't ever feel sick, but you'll have no notice the moment of your death. What were you gonna do with the time you have remaining? Will you change your life and how will you do this? Third and final question, today's the day. Imagine your doctor shocks you now with the news that you only have two hours left to live. Notice what feelings arise as you confront the very real feelings of your own mortality. Just ask yourself, what did you miss? Who did you not get to be? And what did you not get to do? At the heart of those answers and managing those questions is aligning your finances in line with that general bucket concept before. That is real financial planning. It's the core of what we do. It's the architect aspect of designing the life you want and then engineering it to make sure it's as tax efficient, as optimal with investments, all the rest of it. But it has nothing to do with picking the best stocks or just moving money around for the sake of it. I hope that's been useful. Thanks for watching.